I'm just a little sad. Just wanted to say, it's interesting to me the thought of doors. I I've reiterated through the years, um, January that door window. Uh, as we peer back over the last year and as we look forward to the next year, what doors mean and uh, how they are. Um, some of you maybe have worked for someone and they'll say, I have an open door policy. So you know that you can go in and you can talk at any time. There are other doors that are closed and uh, life is full of open and closed doors. And uh, the Lord said that he set before us an open door. Uh, it's important to seek the Lord for the right doors to go through um, because it's inevitable that some doors that are closed are meant to go through. However, some doors that are open are not meant to go through. It seems almost contradictory to yourself uh, as I say this, but not every open door is the Lord's will. Not every closed door does not mean that God does not want you to walk through that door. So it's waiting for the time and trusting God to open the door. Uh, what was it like for Paul and Silas? They were behind a prison door, but God glorious came, gloriously came as they sang and worshipped God, and God opened the door for them. And uh, uh, the door was locked, and Peter knocked on the door, uh, and Rhoda answered, and the door was open. And I just want to encourage us this year, as we are making decisions about our lives, as we're thinking about what God has for us, our whole lives should be uh, with the mindset as Christians uh, that, God, I want to be led by you. So if, if you come to the door that's closed, when we got our house and we purchased it, it wasn't as big as what we thought we would need for a family. So there was this door that you could go to the upstairs, but it was always kept closed because it was an attic door. You know what we did when we got in that house? We, we, we decided we didn't want that door anymore because it led to an area that we could really live and enjoy. Uh, maybe there's sometimes doors in our lives. We need to ask God, God, it seems closed, but I need you to open because this is where you want me to go. And when God opens a door, or when a door is open, use wisdom and discretion. Is this the door to walk through? That's just a little nugget for you tonight, prior to Bible study, just as you're thinking about this year and the light of eternity. So, I shared with you last week in the, uh, the transition of uh, black light and getting back into Bible study and where I wanted to go. I shared with you where we are going to go, but there was a, uh, some decision time for me. Uh, I was sitting in my office and I was thinking, I was praying um, about Bible study where we would go, and I looked behind um, um, a case that I have with some melted fish in, and I saw some posters of a series that we did five years ago, and I just wanted to revisit them. We started last week. Uh, we look this week, may finish up this week, maybe we'll go into next week, but that will be the end. It's not going to be as serious as it, as it was before. Uh, so going back all those years, uh, we, we talked about something that's very important, so practical in our lives, but something that we use as a spiritual sense as well. And we talked about guardrails and what guardrails means in our life. So some of you are familiar with that. Some of you are your new faces to this. And so we, when we looked at guardrails, we talked about the importance of what guardrails are in our life and how important it is to have them in our life. Uh, we need them. We realize that, that guardrails are set up uh, when there are two opposing lines of traffic. They're going in uh, opposing directions. So between that, there are guardrails. We, uh, we know that in our lives, that we are no longer children in, of darkness. We're no longer children of the world, but we've been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. And now we walk in the light as He is in the light. And we have fellowship with Him, the Word of God says. And so everything about our lives are transformed. 
And so as we are transformed, we realize that the world's still going in a direction that we're not going in. And so there has to be some guardrails that are set up for that opposing direction. Then we talked about how that there are guardrails on bridges. And oftentimes, bridges will narrow down from the highway and as they cross over an area that, that could be harmful and, and fatal to us that would cause a crash if we went into that area thinking about some uh, bridges go over top of rivers and streams. Some go, if you grew up in West Virginia, they will actually bridge between mountain to mountain. If you look underneath them, your mind just is amazed by the pillars that hold up the highway that bridges those mountains together. There are bridges that go over top of uh, up tunnels where there are subways or there are uh, trains. Uh, there are uh, lower lanes of traffic going. You all are very familiar with that. So we know that when we go across the bridge uh, in that area where there are the medians, uh, the are places where there's very low uh, room or error for margin, if you would, uh, uh, margin for error. And so we put up guardrails so that we don't go into that area that, that would bring error or damage or hurt to us. So biblically speaking, we have to have guardrails up in those areas. And then there are guardrails up where there are curves. Curves on the road. Any of you ever drive a windy road before? Uh, any of you ever go over Goldmine Mountain? And you know like the twists and the turns of Goldmine Mountain, and some of y'all probably think of various roads where there are curves that there are unexpected changes. How many of you have lived long enough that you know that there are unexpected changes in life? Life is, well, it'll, it'll throw you a curveball. And so it's necessary to have guardrails placed that, you know, when life changes, that, that you're still in the safety zone. And so guardrails are put uh, are not where there is danger, but on the inside of danger. They're aligned so that we don't go to the area that is dangerous. So they're placed on the inside. And they keep us from dangerous areas. Guardrails have that margin for areas. And uh, uh, maybe some of you have experienced this before, but maybe some of you have hit a guardrail. And I know that's no fun. No one wants to bang their car up and no one wants to hit a guardrail. But the good news in that case is this, that there's a little damage done versus a lot of damage done. And so uh, when we put guardrails up in our life, even if we hit the guardrail, it's okay. It's little damage that is, uh, that is done versus big damage that, that could be a catastrophe in our life, spiritually speaking. So God, here at the beginning of 2019, help us to put guardrails up. Uh, what are those areas of your life where you need to put guardrails up? Those areas that need to be safety zones, that, that, that ensure your soul is right with God, that ensures your walk with Christ is uninhibited by anything of this world. So you, you, you make sure that, 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 that there is uh, 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 places that, that are on the, the line of, uh, of not going into error. Remember last week we talked about See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, uh, but wise, redeeming the time, uh, 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 not being unwise, but knowing, uh, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Sister you said that I said this before, and I said this a lot, but living life intentional. We only have so much time, we only have that dash, we only have a few days and some choices, Brother Dennis, that will affect all of our eternity. So it's a living circumspectly. We talked about what that means. That means that it's like you're out in, in, in a pasture where maybe there's horses or there's cows. And because of them being there, their waste product is there. So you're cautious of where you walk because you don't want to step in something that, that, that stinks, that is a mess. God help us to keep ourselves godly and pure, that we don't step in areas that defile. And... Uh, We know that there are 
different types of guardrails in our life, and we can put them up by standards of being biblical standards, things that the Word of God tells us that we're not compromising on. When God's Word speaks to us in a particular area, we need to put the guardrails up, and we're not going to compromise on this. God's Word has said it. And so no, no matter what the world says, no matter what those who are our contemporaries do, we are staying inside the guardrails because we place it because God's Word has said this. And then there's things that we do as a church, as a body, uh, uh, and we place guardrails for the safety of our church growth and for the protection of the Spirit of God to be able to move. And that's why that there are rules and regulations. OSHA sets them up in, in our workplaces because they set guardrails up so that we remain healthy and we remain secure and intact and everyone's kept from harm. And so the church does that as well. And then when we get in the Word of God, there may be areas in our life that, that are not just biblical standards and not just standards that are set by the church, but we find that God is convicting us of areas of our life and we raise the standard higher because God wants us to protect our heart, to protect our life, and to protect our family. So we put the guardrails there so that we can have safety for us. There are guardrails that are placed up. Standards that are there. And so we put the guardrails up and so that we, we, we make sure that we make heaven our home and we live a godly life that is intentional. Are you living life intentional? Or is it life taking control of you? If we're, I were to ask you right now, are you, are you in control like God has given you guidelines and standards? We know that God's in control. I understand that. I'm not, I'm not undermining or underplaying God. God's in control. But are we allowing Him to be in control of every area of our life where we know it's in control and God has put us in boundaries or has a life just set the boundaries and you're flying all over the place? Living life intentionally. Let's talk about this for a few moments. Folks are going in the opposite direction. How does that affect our lives? Let's, let's, let's be transparent tonight. Um, those people within close proximity of our lives and us living our lives typically and almost always influence us. They do. So the folks who we choose to be around the folks who in life that we spend the proximity with influence us. And, and uh, as we think about friendship, friendship, uh, uh, the very things that make it so great also makes it so dangerous. The influence of them can be so great, but the influence of the wrong people can be so dangerous as well if we allow it to be. And uh, 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 we all, all of us in here are repelled by rejection, but we're all attracted by acceptance. All of us want to be accepted. Whether you, 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 you appear that way, whatever your facade is, everybody wants acceptance. No one wants to be rejected. And so that's why it's so important that we make sure that we put around us wise people who will influence us in a very godly way. Thank God for church. Amen. Thank God for church and folks that we can influence here and folks who influence and encourage us. That's what God did. God knew that we as human beings would be influenced by others. And we love acceptance. We hate rejection. It repels us. And so God established the church. In Proverbs, Solomon said, he said, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. That's a promise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Wise people, I'm talking about wise people in the kingdom of God. Wise people and real wise people, they love God and love obeying the commandments of God. 
And so if we want to be wise, the Word of God says uh, that, that, that uh, he that it walketh with a wise man shall be wise, but, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Foolish people are careless about obeying the laws of God. They don't see the worthiness. They don't see the value. They don't have the relationship with God. So they don't value the wisdom that comes from God's Word and honor Him in all that we do. And so if we're going to be wise, we're going to be companions of wise people, people who love God. It should strengthen our relationship within the church. It should strengthen our relationship with other believers because they're wise. They love God. They want to honor God. Those are the folks I want to put around me because uh, uh, he that walketh the wise will be wise. Wise people realize that all life is connected. What decisions I make today will be connected to my tomorrows. Foolish people live for the moment. They don't realize that whatever decisions I make now will be connected to my tomorrow. They live for the moment. Does it feel good now? And so, God help us to be wise and God help us to be friends with the wise. I believe it's important to live in the moment. It's important to live in this moment that God has given us. The only two days that will never, that you'll never have this year. The only two days, you're listening, the only two days that you'll never have this year is yesterday and tomorrow. So you have today. So we need to live in today. But our todays will be connected with all of our tomorrows and our eternity. So we've got to be wise. Uh, wisdom is contagious, but foolishness is not. A companion of, the, of fools shall be destroyed. It's like you may say, well, I don't feel like I'm real foolish. But if the companions that you're fooling around with are foolish, the Word of God says, you'll be uh, killed by the shrapnel that comes from their self-destructiveness. And so we've got to be wise. God, help us to be influenced by godly, wise people. See, it's important to me to have friends that are concerned about God. It's important for me to have friends that are concerned about the marriage. It is important for me to have friends who are concerned about their families. It's important for me to have friends who are concerned about their financial responsibilities and obligations. Because folks who are wise in the things of God, and all these things about life are connected to God. Don't kid yourself. Our marriages are connected to God. Our families are connected to God. The way that we spend our money is connected to God. The way that we, we handle ourselves in every area is connected to God. So that's why it's important to have an influence of folks around us that, 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 that are connected. In 2 Samuel chapter number 13, the Bible talks about someone, and we've, I've preached about him before, and we've talked about him, but it's one of David's sons. His name is Amnon. And Amnon had a real problem. The Bible says that Amnon had a sister whose name was Tamar. And he was very vexed. He was sick because he felt sick for his sister Tamar. The Bible says that she was a virgin. And, and Amnon thought it very hard to do anything to her. This is what Scripture said. And Amnon thought it very hard to do anything to her, comma, but Amnon had a friend. But Amnon had a friend. Amnon's friend's name was Jonadab. And uh, Jonadab, the Bible says he was a very subtle man. I, I, I've, I've read of, of our enemy who's subtle. I've read of others in the Bible who are subtle. And, and Amnon was the first born, born son of David. And he had the rightful uh, heir to the throne of Israel. Uh, he lived in the palace and he had everything that everyone could ever want. He had the reputation of being royal. Uh, he had an imperial lineage. He, uh, 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 he had anything that he wanted, but, but behind Amnon, uh, 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 there was a, a fraud. Amnon had 
this deep, dark secret uh, that he was trying to deal with, and it consumed him, and he had lust for his sister Tamar. Now, he thought that this lust would never happen. He, he, he thought that no one would ever know. He kept it concealed. He didn't want anyone to know about it. Uh, he knew he couldn't uh, court her because it was forbidden by the law of God. It was not accepted. And, uh, but he, he entertained this secretly. Now, you all maybe have heard of LSD in the scripture. It pretty much backs it as well. It says this. It says that lust will bring forth sin, and sin will bring forth death. And so LSD is very real in all of our lives. It will grab a hold of us, and if we allow our lust to take over, it will bring sin in our life, and it will bring death. Why do I say this is because Ammon had this friend, uh, and he thought he would never, ever do this. I would never, ever, ever do that. But unfortunately, he shared it with his friend who did not have the same morality as Ammon did. Uh, he did not live by a godly standard. He did not honor God. And you know what? Birds of a feather that flock together can be very dangerous. And so he shares his heart with, with John and Dad. And John and Dad says, it's okay. Gives him a plan. And, and you know what happens? We know what the Word of God says. That Amnon executed what his friend had planned and devised. And he slept with his sister Tamar. And that same love that he had for her, well, there's a fine line between love and hate because then he hated her. He brought disgrace to God, number one. He brought disgrace to his father. He brought disgrace to his family. He brought disgrace to the kingdom. Uh, and so here it is uh, that, that, that it all took place because Amnon had this one friend. I think Jonadab, his name is interesting in itself because Jonadab's name, name means Jehovah gives. And, and Jonadab could have had a relationship with God that he really knew about Jehovah giving, but he miscalculated and he misconstrued and he didn't live godly and he thought Jehovah would give you things that was off limits. Guess what, Jonadab? You should have had guardrails and so should have Amnon. See, in our lives, We will have friends. All of us in here will have friends that doesn't share the faith, whether because of family or because of work or because of life situations. Is there something wrong with having unsafe friends? No, we need to evangelize them. We need to show them the love of Christ. But with our friendship with them, the value of them accepting us, the value of them and their life having more influence on us than godliness. We're in danger. We're in danger. The Bible says, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupts bad manners. You ever talk to someone who got involved in drugs? I have. I have a lot. And you know what it all comes back to? How did you get involved in this? Well, I had a friend. Talk to folks who are alcoholics. How did you get Well, I had a friend back in high school. How did you get started smoking? Well, I had a friend who gave me a cigarette. Or... You even look at folks who lose their way from church, and how did you how did you lose out with God? Well, I have a friend. There has to be things in our life that are established as children of God. We're going a different direction. Sometimes some friendships have to be broken so that God is. I can share from a personal level 